Hi, I'm Eric Kelly from kellyplanet.com. This is a closer look at Star Trek The Next Generation, Season 4, Episode 21, The Drumhead. For some weeks, we have had a Klingon exobiologist on board as part of a scientific exchange program. Unfortunately, we suspect that he was involved in a security breach and in the possible sabotage of our warp drive. We're in the Enterprise's special interrogation room, and we saw this once before when they were questioning Romulan Admiral Jarak in the defector. Klingon guy, his name is Jadan, says, Oh, I didn't do anything, but Riker says, Uh, yeah, you did. We have proof. Troy says, Come on, man. We know the Romulans got a hold of our warp core specs like a week later, but he's all like, Well, I don't know about that. You accuse me because I am Klingon. Our chief of security is Klingon. That has nothing to do with it. He says, just send me home. And Riker says, yeah, we'll do just that once the investigation is finished. Worf takes him back to his quarters. Troy says, oh yeah, he's hiding something. Jadan says to Worf, you know, I have some powerful friends back home that can help you out with your, you know, dishonor problem. All you gotta do is sneak me onto a shuttle and look the other way. It could be done without anyone knowing about it. <laughs> <laughs> transferred secret information to the Romulans, but I will find out to talk. <laughs> yeah, Worf's not messing around. If the High Council finds out he was aiding the Romulans, Judan would be better off in a Federation prison. Captain's Log Supplemental. Retired Admiral Nora Satie, whose investigation exposed the alien conspiracy against Starfleet Command three years ago, is arriving to assist in our inquiry. There's Admiral Satie and her aides. She's played by Gene Simmons. Not that Gene Simmons. I had no idea who she was when I was 10, but she's British and apparently very popular in Hollywood, like in the 1950s. That guy is Betazoid, and she is Delbian. Picard offers to show her her quarters, but she says, nah, I'd rather get right to work. Let's go check out the damage to your engine room. Satie meets Data and Geordi, and behind that door is the warp core, but that's not what we usually see when Geordi does his, like, tuck and roll maneuver. The radiation is way too high, and Data says they can't go in there for another 49 hours. It's almost like the Enterprise runs on a nuclear reactor, but, you know, it doesn't. So we get to see a video of the explosion from four days ago. Geordi says no one was killed, but two of his guys are in sick bay with radiation burns. That the articulation frame collapsed. The schematics that were stolen from the Enterprise, I believe some involved the articulation frame of the dilithium chamber. That's one reason we tend to suspect sabotage. Picard and Satie are having tea and telling us stuff we already know when Worf stops by. He thinks he figured out how that Jadan guy got the plans off the ship, Apparently he has Baltimore syndrome, so it's not weird that he keeps a hyperspray on him, but that hyperspray can read data off of chips and encode it into amino acid sequences so he can inject it into somebody to smuggle off the ship, okay? Even if they don't know about it. The body itself becomes a conveyor of top secret files. Lieutenant Worf, when we confront Jadan, I want you to conduct the interrogation. Worf says, cool, that works for me. See you guys later. Oh, here we are already. Worf says he tracked everyone who's left the ship recently, and some Tarkanian diplomat has since disappeared, which is kind of suspicious. Jadan says, ah, oh, that doesn't prove anything. So Worf says, oh yeah, well, what about this tricky hypo spray we found in your quarters? The blood of all Klingons has become water. Since the Federation Alliance, we have turned into a nation of mewling babies. Romulans are strong. They are worthy allies. They do not turn Klingons into weaklings like you. Well, that's kind of a confession. Satie asks him exactly how he damaged the lithium chamber. He says, yeah, I like Romulans, but I had nothing to do with that. So Worf takes him away, and Betazoid guy says he thinks Jadan is telling the truth. So there must be other bad guys loose on the Enterprise. Picard and Satie are having tea again, and he's like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. You're so awesome. She says she wasn't too thrilled to be partnered up with him on this investigation, but she thinks he's pretty great too. And it doesn't hurt that he's familiar with her father's work. He was a famous judge, and she's all about her dad. That guy is Simon Tarsus, he's a med tech, and he has pointy ears. Mr. Tarsus, your records state that you were born on Mars Colony. That's right. Then you are human? Largely. My paternal grandfather was Vulcan. Yes, I see that. Tarsus gave Jadan his insulin shots or whatever, once or twice, but never talked to him, so he's excused. The guy seems kind of nervous, though. Yeah, Betazoid guy says he is lying. Tarsus is covering up something big. Maybe they found their saboteur. Satie wants Picard to limit Tarsus' movement on the ship, but he's uncomfortable doing that solely on the instincts of a Betazoid. She points out that he would if Troy said so, and he's like, yeah, you're right. Maybe I should reevaluate my thinking about that. Picard won't do anything without evidence, and Satie says, well, that's dumb. In the meantime, lives could be lost. 
Just then, Joy chimes in because he has something to look at in engineering. We've made microtomographic analyses of the dilithium chamber. And when we take a reading of that spot, see? I'm afraid I'm out of my element, Commander. You'll have to interpret for me. So what does that mean? Data figures that thing blew up because the hatch was replaced with a faulty model the last time they were at McKinley Station. So, no sabotage. Betazoid guy thinks they're full of crap. Satya is just looking for trouble, so she thinks that just because the explosion was an accident doesn't mean that there's not a conspiracy on the ship. Worf says they should keep investigating Tarsus because he's lying about something. Now, please, let me remind you he is innocent until he's proved guilty. Of course he is. What Sabin is saying is that he and Lieutenant Worf would like to establish his innocence. Picard says, fine, let's get this over with as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, it looks like this is a public spectacle now. And yeah, Satie let all those people in here on purpose to make Tarsus sweat. I think it's kind of funny that he has to sit on a regular old office chair. Anyway, Riker has been designated his legal counsel. He's going to need it because Betazoid guy straight up lies and says the explosion was caused by chemicals Tarsus had access to in sickbay. And he says, I had nothing to do with that. And Betazoid guy says, well, how can we believe you? We know you are a liar. <laughs> Whoa. Riker objects and is sustained, but Betazoid guy says Tarsus lied on his Starfleet application. Isn't it true that the paternal grandfather of whom you speak was not a Vulcan, but was in fact a Romulan? That it is Romulan blood you carry and a Romulan heritage that you honor. We're waiting, Mr. Tarsus. So Tarsus bleeds the fifth, or whatever they call it in the future. Picard has a meeting with Worf and says, Hey man, this whole thing reminds me of a drumhead trial. Worf isn't familiar with old school Earth terminology and has no idea what he's talking about. So the captain explains that back in the day, military trials were quick and decisive and super not fair. Worf says, yeah, okay, but we know there's a traitor in our midst, and Jadan admitted his guilt. Tarsus has all but done the same. How? He refused to answer the question about his Romulan grandfather. That is not a crime, Worf. Nor can we infer his guilt because he didn't respond. Worf figures if a man were not afraid of the truth, he would have no problem answering the question. Picard's like, oh no, there's this seventh guarantee thing in the Federation, which isn't explained, but I assume it's like innocent until proven guilty. Sir, the Federation does have enemies. We must seek them out. Oh yes, that's how it starts. Something is wrong here, Mr. Wolf. I don't like what we have become. Here's a long talky-talky scene with Picard and Tarsus, and the point here is that the young fella isn't such a bad guy. We're back to Picard and Satie again. And he's like, you have to stop going after Tarsus. This is out of control. She flat out calls Picard naive and says that her whole life's purpose is to preserve the awesomeness that is the United Federation of Planets. Don't mess with me or you'll regret it. The hearings on Simon Tarsus will stop. I have news for you, Captain. I've been in constant contact with Starfleet Command. The hearings are not going to stop. They're going to be expanded. Oh, and she's bringing Admiral Henry from Starfleet Security Board because she doesn't need Picard's permission or approval, and she's an ass. What you're doing here is unethical. It's immoral. I'll fight it. Do what you must, Captain. And so will I. Data says the warp engines are all fixed up, and tall lady what's-her-name tells Picard that he's to be interrogated next. You are served. Oh, come on, you jerks. This is Captain Frigate Picard. Captain's log supplemental. Admiral Thomas Henry, who has worked closely with Nora Satie in the past, has arrived to observe the hearings. So now the captain has to sit in that crappy office chair. He wants to make a statement, but Satie says no way. But then he quotes the book, and he has every right to say something. He's concerned about this whole situation. It started with the confession of a traitor, who will be punished, but it didn't stop there. They put Tarsus on trial, despite what they want to call it. And now his life is a mess, all because his grandfather was a Romulan. Have we become so fearful, have we become so cowardly, that we must extinguish a man because he carries the blood of a current enemy? He goes on to implore Sati to give this up and move on. End this now. Sati shoots back with the fact that Picard has violated the Prime Directive nine times so far. Good thing she never meets Captain Janeway, <laughs> or Kirk. Picard explains that all those incidents have been documented with Starfleet, and she says, Oh yeah, we know. We're digging up all the dirt on you, Captain. Then Betazoid guy brings up the time the Enterprise was transporting a Vulcan ambassador who turned out to be a Romulan spy. That was not Picard's fault. And if you remember, he was outnumbered by Warbirds 3-1 to one in the neutral zone, as Worf points out. So Satie blames Worf too, and Betazoid guy brings up his father's collaboration with the Romulans, which we know is a bunch of crap. 
Have you completely recovered from your experience with the Borg? must have been awful for you, being forced to use your vast knowledge of Starfleet operations to aid the Borg. Here we find out that it was 39 ships that were lost at Wolf 359, not 40. I guess that was just like a rounded estimate they did earlier. And 11,000 people died on those ships. Sati blatantly questions Picard's loyalty to the Federation, and our man keeps his cool. There are some words I've known since I was a schoolboy. But the first link the chain is forged, the first thought forbidden, the first freedom denied, chains us all irrevocably. Those words came directly from her dad. And the first time a man's freedoms are trodden on, we are all damaged. How dare you? My father was a great man. His name stands for integrity and principle. I will expose you for what you are. I brought down bigger men than you, Picard. <laughs> yeah, she's nuts. And Admiral Henry just gets up and leaves because he thinks so too. Her rant was like three times longer than what I showed you here. Worf stops by to see his captain and informs him that Admiral Henry has put a stop to all this nonsense, and Satie has been sent packing. Awesome. Picard says, you know, we used to torture people and burn witches, and you'd think that all that's behind us, and then, you know, this happens. Worf says, oh, you know, I believed her. But Picard assures him, you know, bad guys are easy to spot. Those cloaked in good deeds are easily camouflaged. But she, or someone like her, will always be with us. Spreading fear in the name of righteousness. Vigilance, Mr. Worf. That is the price we have to continually pay. <laughs> wow, what an episode. I think this is some of the best stuff Jerry Taylor has ever written. Yeah, this is another courtroom-centric kind of deal that's 100% talky-talky with no action or fun to speak of. But this episode is very important. Considering just U.S. history, this mirrors the internment camps of World War II, the McCarthy era, and stuff that didn't even happen yet when this was written, like uh, the Patriot Act or Guantanamo. It's easy to view things as Picard did because he's right, but the question is, when there's a threat, how far do you go? I don't think anyone has a good answer for that. I think it's pretty obvious that at a certain point, Satie got super tunnel vision and was just going to persecute anyone to fit her agenda. Believe it or not, I never liked this episode, or at least I skip it because it's no fun. I was almost 11 when this came out. No, this show came out in April of 91. I was almost 10, not 11. Anyway, and a lot of it went over my head at the time. But I was absolutely pissed off at Satie for treating Picard like that, and I thought she was psychotic. That being said, I recognize how good this episode is and how the material is still pertinent to this day. Let's do five deltas out of five. You can let me know how you feel about that. If you like that video, thank you. Like and subscribe if you want to. There's more Star Trek videos and related content on my website. Check it out at kellyplanet.com. I'm Eric Kelly. Live long and prosper.